Today we're going to talk about taxonomy, which is the study of how we classify and name living things. We have millions of species on Earth, so how are we going to organize them, how are we going to categorize them, and how are we going to refer to them in a way that is not confusing? That is what the study of taxonomy aims to tackle. Okay, so if you look at this animal, I want you to think of the first name that pops into your head. Some of you may think, oh, well, that's easy. Okay, that is an orca. Well, some of you might think it's not an orca, it's a killer whale. Those are two different names for the exact same species, and there are a lot of other names for that species as well. Now, the cat in this image has over 30 different names. You may think of that as a mountain lion. You may think of that as a cougar, a puma, a catamount, a panther. If you're from the mountains of Western North Carolina, you may have heard old folks calling them painters. Sounds like a painter, but it is another name for this wild cat. There are also plants like this plant, which you may have seen in Chatham County, that go by so many different names that it is hard to keep track. Uh, let me read through these real quick. Daughter vine, strangle vine, scald weed, lady laces, fire weed, wizard's net, devil's guts, devil's hair, devil's ringlet, gold thread, hail weed, hair weed, hell bide, love vine, pull down, strangle weed, strangled hair, angel's hair, witch's hair. Now, you may think, well, my... My oh my. This guy got fed up with all of that, right? What are you referring to? What plant? What animal? And this guy, he looks like a friendly little grandmother from the 1700s. His name is Carolus Linnaeus. He was a Swedish botanist and naturalist. And in the 1700s, he got fed up with how many different names there were for all of these different plants and animals around him. So he is called the father of modern taxonomy. And his name, again, is Linnaeus. I don't want to misspell this. I'm pretty sure you spell it like that. You can look it up and check me. Maybe there's only one N. Okay, so Linnaeus is the father of modern taxonomy, and he figured out how to organize things everywhere from tomatoes to fossils like the T-Rex. All right, so what he did is he separated the natural world into two main kingdoms, plants and animals. And then within that, he started to separate them into other denominations and other categories, okay? So he clustered all the reptiles together, all the insects together, all the fish together, etc. He started to organize them based on their morphology, their structures and shapes. So comparative morphology was the main way that he classified these organisms. Now, he didn't just have two categories, plants and animals. Those were the kingdoms. Underneath that, he specified different phylums. For example, jellyfish are part of the Cnidaria phylum, whereas you, as somebody with a backbone, are part of the Chordata phylum. Okay, so for example, you are an, an, anim you are an, an animal, that's your kingdom. You are an animal with a backbone, that is a limited part of the animal kingdom. Right? And then you are specifically a mammal. That would be your class, the mammalian class, because you have fur and hair and you, if you're female, could produce milk. If you're male, you were raised on milk. Okay. Um, you are also primates, meaning that you have collarbones and grasping fingers. Okay. And then you have a relatively flat face, three-dimensional vision. That makes you a specific type of primate. You have upright posture, a large brain, and specifically, you have a specific shaped skull that makes you a homo sapien. So when we get down to it, the hierarchy narrows as we go from kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, to species, which again, the species can only mate with members of their own species. So we also have binomial nomenclature, which was part of Linnaeus's classifying system. Bi meaning to, gnome meaning name. And nomenclature is just a, a way of naming something, a naming system. So if we look here, another example, the killer whale, technically, if we wanted to give it a very specific name, we would call it Animalia cordata, Mammalia cetacea, Delphinidae, Orsinus orca. Whew, that is too much, okay? So instead of using all the classifications, what Linnaeus decided was binomial nomenclature would use the last two parts, 
the genus and the species to refer to an organism. So again, binomial nomenclature would be Orcanus orca, and that's actually not in the right format. So when we do species, genus, species name, you put the genus for first, Orcinus, and you italicize it, which is not shown in my drawing. But then the species name, you actually are going to lowercase. And the genus name is uppercase. Orsinus orca actually means, I think, kingdom of death. So those killer whales mean business. Now, over time, as we have better and better technology, we have learned more and more about the different ways of classifying living things on Earth. So microscopes helped us realize there are not just plants and animals, but there are also bacteria. There are unicellular little organisms that kind of are like plant and animal combined. Lots of different organisms outside of the plant and animal. And then as we understand DNA, we can use DNA and molecular genetics to refine and edit our classifying systems to fit animals really where they belong. So nowadays, we actually add another level beyond kingdom. There are three domains. Archaea and bacteria are your prokaryotes. And then we have eukaryota, which is all of the eukaryotes. Now, within those three domains, there are six kingdoms. There's only one kingdom for archaea and one kingdom for bacteria. But there are four kingdoms in the eukaryote domain. So we're going to talk about this classification system in class. 